Welcome back to the Old Soul Millennial Channel. Every year, millions of people struggle with an issue known as D12VVEF, diagnosing 12 volt vehicular electrical faults. I'm here to tell you, there is hope. With the basic understanding of 12 volt wiring and the proper diagnostic equipment, most average people can self repair 12 volt issues on their own, thus avoiding a trip to a repair garage, or even worse, the dealership. Which brings us to the topic of today's video. This device right here, this is one of my favorite tools. I am not sponsored by this company. Purchased this with my own money and I just wanted to share it with you because I think it's such a phenomenal tool. What is it? Well, this is the Power Probe 3 and this is the ultimate tool for circuit testing and troubleshooting. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a basic elementary education on how this device works and how to use it when troubleshooting an issue with the 12 volt circuit. So without further ado, let's power up this tool and start going over its features. Now, before we power up this Power Probe 3, let's quickly go over what's included in the kit. So you get this nice hard carrying case. This is where I normally store everything. A simple instruction manual. You get the Power Probe itself, hardwired onto that Power Probe is about 20 feet of cable. You also get a 20 foot extension cable, which is really nice when you're dealing with trailer wiring issues. And then you get two options as to how you want to supply power to the power probe, either a cigarette lighter or alligator clamps, which will clamp directly onto the battery. Typically, I like to use the alligator clamps because on most modern cars, the power supplied to the cigarette lighter will time out after you shut the key off for a short period of time. So now it is time to supply power to the power probe. I've decided that I don't want to use the extension cable, but I do want to use the alligator clamps. So I'm simply going to plug the alligator clamps into the hardwired end on the power probe. You can see that these connectors are impossible to mix up due to that flat spot on the positive terminal. So we'll just plug this in and then we will clamp our alligator clamps directly onto the battery. Of course, red goes to positive and black goes to negative. You can see the power probe has now turned on. So now that we have power supplied to the power probe, we will go over the power probe's basic features, operation, and how to utilize it when diagnosing basic electrical faults. I'll give you three scenarios and how to use this tool and it should become very clear very quickly how incredibly versatile this tool is and why you should throw out your old test light and just get one of these. So starting off, the end of the power probe is sharp and it is designed to pierce through the jacket of wire. Not ideal, you really shouldn't do that, but sometimes you have to do what you have to do. You also have two LED lights which illuminate the probe on the end of the power probe, which is fantastic when you're working in dark spaces underneath a dash in an engine bay just really well thought out feature. On the end of the power probe, you have a permanently attached grounded alligator clamp, and this is always grounded. So if I were to test this on the tip of the power probe right now, I'm gonna turn the sound on. Gives us a green light indicating that this surface is ground, and the sound also indicates that it is grounded, as opposed to the positive sound, that is the hot or positive sound, that's the grounding sound. Also on the right side of the tool, you have a little circuit breaker. So if you accidentally short at this tool, like supply power to the tip and tap it on a grounded surface, as opposed to burning out the tool or the wire, this circuit breaker should trip. I'm obviously not gonna do that right now because I don't wanna risk damaging my tool. This button right here, this turns the sound on or off. So as I showed you a moment ago, if you're testing a grounded surface, if you don't want that sound on, you could just push this button. Turn it off, turn it on, up to you. So, you can detect whether there's 12 volts of power ground by simply tapping power probe on a hot or grounded surface. You can supply 12 volts of power or ground the tip of the power probe on demand. And you can also use the alligator clip as its own ground to test out individual components. And now the fun part, now we get to utilize the power probe to troubleshoot some basic 12 volt electrical faults. Now in order for a 12 volt circuit to function properly, we need to have a complete loop. So we will have a battery, we will have a supply line that goes to our fixture or component. Within that line there should be a fuse, sometimes there's a relay and sometimes there's a switch. We have the fixture itself and then there is a ground line which returns the circuit back to the battery. Again, we need to have a complete loop in order for our component to function properly. When our component is not functioning properly, keep things pretty simple. It could usually be one of three things. We could have an issue with the supply going to the fixture. We could have an issue with the ground returning the power from the fixture back to the battery, 
or we could have an issue with the fixture itself. And the power probe makes it as painless as possible to troubleshoot and figure out where that issue may lie. So when we're dealing with a 12 volt electrical fault, we have to pick a point in which we wanna start. So I have my light plugged into the battery, right? It's connected to the battery. There's a fuse for that supply line off camera, but for some reason, my light is not coming on. I'm gonna take my power probe and I'm gonna probe the negative line coming off the fixture. And we're gonna see if we're getting a good ground here. So when I probe the negative line coming off the fixture, the green negative comes on and the power probe sounds, indicating that we do have a good ground. No voltage, this is a good ground. So our issue is not within our ground. So we can cross that off. Is it the fixture itself or a supply issue? Well, not sure yet. Let's probe the supply line. Let's see if we're getting 12 volts of power coming into the fixture. Interesting, so when I probe the 12 volt supply line going into the fixture, the plus indicator is not turning on, the power probe is not sounding in that high pitch sound, and I'm not getting any voltage on the screen. So that tells me we are not getting 12 volts of power coming into this light fixture. So now we know our issue is in between the light and the battery itself. So from here, you would have to trace back this wire. Perhaps you have an issue with a switch. Perhaps you have a wire that was chewed through from an animal. Perhaps a fuse is blown. The question is why would that fuse be blown? Now I've traced this wire back to the battery and I've determined that we have an electrical connection right here. So if I probe the line going out to the fixture, again, no power being supplied. Now let's probe the other end of this connector and what do you know? We have 12 volts of power, so that tells me we have an issue with this junction, this connection. So let me try and fix this connection. Maybe you need to rewire in some connectors, scrub off some corrosion. Oh, look at that. The light is now working. Our issue lied within this junction, this connection. All right, let's move on to a bit of a more complicated issue. So the issue this customer is facing is sometimes their light works, sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes when you go over bumps, the light kind of flashes. It doesn't seem to be as bright as it should be. So first let's probe this 12 volt positive line coming in the light fixture. Now it seems like we're getting decent power it is chirping a little bit, which to me indicates, well, maybe we have some type of connection issue. But looking at the voltage, you now we're getting 12.2 voltage. So most likely our positive side is all right. You know, if we were getting like eight volts, six, seven volts, I may investigate that a bit further. Now let's probe the ground wire coming out of the fixture. So you can hear it's bouncing around a lot more than the positive side, which to me indicates that the issue more likely is on the grounding side. So we have some type of electrical issue, most likely a corroded wire, a bad contacts, something of that nature. Unlikely that it's the fixture because the fixture appears to be pretty well illuminated right now. And this is where the sound coming out of the power probe can be very handy. So I'm suspecting we have an issue with the ground, perhaps a bad ground, a loose ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the end of the power probe into this alligator clamp right here and I'm just gonna let the device sound. From here, I'm gonna go down this wire and I'm just gonna wiggle it and look for signs of corrosion. So I had the power probe sounding off and now I would just go throughout the vehicle, maybe shake this wire here and there, try and find a fault. Oh, interesting, that wire just broke apart right there. Oh, look at what we have here. We have a very thin piece of copper. It would appear that this wire has almost completely corroded. Maybe it was rubbing on a sharp metallic object and the salt got into the wire and started corroding the copper away. So in this case, we have a ground issue. So for a situation where you have a corroded wire, obviously you would cut out the old corroded wire and you'd splice in a new clean section of wire and you'd protect that wire and prevent the issue from happening again. So that last issue, we confirmed that we had a ground issue. It was a corroded wire. Now the light fixture is not on again, so let's try this again. Let's probe the positive side going into the light fixture. Getting 12 volts of power, good solid sound. Now let's check the negative side. 
This is kind of weird. So I'm getting pretty high voltage on the negative side. I'm getting 8.5 volts. The power probe isn't sounding. Hmm, I wonder what's going on. You know, I've seen this before on plow trucks. There's normally an issue with the ground. Maybe the ground is corroded where it contacts the frame or ground wire is severed. So in a situation like this, I would push the negative toggle on the power probe. So I would ground the tip of the power probe, probe it into the negative side of the circuit, and let's see what happens. Interesting. So the light is coming on just fine right now. So that tells us we have an issue between the light fixture and the ground, right? Where the fixture returns back to the battery. So what you would have to do is you would have to trace this wire back, try and figure out where that ground fault lies and try and correct the issue. But I just wanted to show this to you because if you're getting weird voltage on the negative side of your fixture, then chances are you probably have some kind of ground issue. So we've gone over an issue with a supply. We've gone over two issues with the ground. Now, what about fixtures? How do you test an individual fixture? Well, it's really simple to do with the power probe. Of course, you know, we test to ensure that our positive side coming into the fixture is hot. And we test the ground to ensure that we're getting good ground going into the fixture. We're getting good ground. Now, the final thing to do is to test the fixture itself. So this is very simple with the power probe. We take this attached grounded, always grounded alligator clip, clip it onto the negative wire out of the fixture. We take the positive line, press the toggle switch forward, applying 12 volts to the tip of the power probe, and then we could test our fixture itself. Which, there's nothing wrong with this fixture, just wanted to show you. But anything 12 volt with this power probe, you can test. For example, this car horn. This light bulb. Other car horns. Dual car horns, amber clearance lights, car horns, other car horns, brake light fixtures, rusty car horns, nope, rusty car horn no work, backup alarms. So I think I've pretty well demonstrated that this is such a handy and versatile device, totally blows the traditional test light out of the water. Again, when you're having a 12 volt electrical fault, just pick a point to start and then think to yourself, do I have an issue with the supply, ground, or fixture itself? With the power probe, it should make it very easy to determine where your issue lies. I'd like to thank you for watching. Leave a link for the power probe in the description down below. I'll catch you on the next one.